We all need a vision. We all need a model. I had a vision a long time ago of the man I wanted to be when I grew up. It was the most intense and persistent vision I had ever had. I'll clarify if you're wondering that drugs were not involved in my vision. <laughs> we're talking a vision, not hallucination. In my vision, I saw tall and strong. I saw clear-headed and well-spoken. I saw smart and successful in service to those in need. In my vision, I saw a good man. This vision took residence in a corner of my mind and made itself a home. My vision was clear, the closest thing I've come to a burning bush. I could see him. He had a voice, and though I didn't name him, for clarity, in the next few minutes we'll call my vision Martin. When I saw people doing things that I did not admire, the man in my vision, Martin, would stand up and say to me, not me, Tyler, not you. Good people don't do that. Good people don't judge. Good people don't cheat. Good people don't lie, Tyler. Neither do you. But the boy, and eventually the man in there, fumbled. I tripped and I stumbled through life's ordeals for a long time. But as my older brother often so eloquently reminded me, I was a certified jack wagon for many years. The truth is that I rarely held true to this vision. We all fall short of the loftiest ideals, but mine was a little more extreme. No matter how persistent Marvin was, the path that I took often led me in a very different direction than the good ideal. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, we all fall short at times to our ideals, our goals, the visions of the people we want to be. But it's comforting to know that while we change, that ideal does not. Seasons change, circumstances change, the people in our lives change, but the ideal we should strive towards does not. Our ideals, of course, vary from person to person. What I consider to be good and right may not fall in line with your definition. I, for one, am grateful for my ideal. You see, Marvin is my grandfather. And Marvin is the best man I have ever known. Sure, there's a sense of obligation in praising one's grandfather, but in 31 years, I have literally never heard anything negative about this man. A cotton farmer, an upstanding member of his community, a man that doesn't drink or smoke or swear. Marvin is truly my mom. In December of 2009, Marvin, my grandfather, passed away at the age of 94. Finals week, the most intense semester of my senior year in college, I was called away to carry his coffin alongside seven of his other grandsons. And on a cold and dry morning in Waxahachie, Texas, we placed my grandfather in the ground and reflected on his life. On that day, I saw more love and mourning for any one person than I had ever seen. Everyone in this community had a story of how this man made a difference in their lives. During a moving ceremony, not a dry eye was seen. Not mine. His wife, my grandmother, passed two years later. They were married for 74 years. Hopeless lovebirds until the end. There's probably a few people here that don't have such a model. We do, however, see people we admire every day. From athletes, to business leaders, to visionaries, to people that have turned their lives around from utterly desperate circumstances. What we don't wish to model, of course, is just as common. My teenage years are the perfect example of what not to do with your life, trust me. But who or what is your model? If you're drawing a blank, you can't think of that ideal family member or business leader, I have a suggestion for you today. Become the model. I've always thought it strange that though every word has been written, we can copyright a book and call it unique. Everything I have ever said, everything you have ever said, or ever will say, technically, has been said before. Shakespeare may have invented a few words, but by and large, he was plagiarizing the dictionary. <laughs> we can do the same thing with our lives. Did you see a good deed being done today? Pass it on. Smile to a child, holding the door for a stranger, saying, yes, sir, and no, sir, to your elders. We witness the good in this world every day, but we are far too often blind to put that good in our lives. Mahatma Gandhi told us to be the change we wish to see in the world. 
That change exists every day, all around us, in bits and bytes and pieces. We can be collectors of good. We can gather this, leave that, save this one for later. And in so doing, we can become that new model. The pillars of our community are in this room today. When my grandfather at age 94 was near the end, his body, his image was no longer a pillar. It was soft and aged, withered and broken. But the model he built in 94 years was stronger than stone. His spirit and his legacy were nearly a century in the making. And the family he so loved, we are fortified by those efforts. I am fortified by Marvin's efforts. Do you have a model? Many of you, I'm sure, do. When you leave here today, do them justice. If you do not, well, it's time to start building. You will see good today. You will see noble and right and true. You will see the best this world has to offer. All you have to do is pick it up. Collecting good is as good a habit as you will ever have. Regardless of your circumstances, one thing we can all agree on is this. The world needs new Marvins. The world needs new models and new visions. What the world really needs right now, my friends, more than anything else, is you.